Den and DJ standalone uses. Newmark standalone uses. Rejoice because Engine DJ 3.3 has just this second been launched and it brings new features like match, like profiles, like cloud BPM, key, and beat grid, extra effects, and a fader echo, all of which have been asked for, and a few of which are surprises. So we are going to look at them all today. I have a Prime 4 set up here, where I can show you all the new features, and we're gonna take your questions on them as well. However, because this is a live show from the studios of Digital DJ Tips, the world's leading online DJ school, and because we want everyone watching live to tune in, I'm gonna run our 30 second intro now, and then we'll get right to it. See you very shortly. So if you're a user of the Prime series of equipment from Den and DJ, then you're gonna to wanna to watch this. If you're a user of the Newmark Mixstream Pro or ProGo, you're gonna to wanna to watch this. But if you're just interested in the way standalone, i.e. no laptop needed, DJ technology is moving on, watch on because there's some great new stuff here that they have just launched. So we're gonna talk through the kind of five big areas on this but also we're gonna look at a couple of things they've added to the desktop software as well. In fact, one big thing they've added to the desktop software, this is the software running on the laptop here, which is used to prepare your music, uh, although I've actually got it used uh, as a remote library plugged into this unit here now, so I didn't have to export a USB. It's another feature it has. Nonetheless, the laptop software is not DJ software, it's preparation software or library software. There are some new things on there as well, or one big new thing. So we're gonna look at all that now. We're gonna smash through the whole lot at the end. Uh, please do ask questions if you're live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Even if you're not live, ask questions underneath and my team and I will get to you. So Engine DJ 3.3, the new features are borrowed from everywhere really. There's a little bit borrowed from here, a little bit borrowed from there. So they are really a bit of a magpie, gathering all these good new things from elsewhere. And we think that's great. As long as it's done properly, no problem at all with that. Uh, the first one then is profiles. Now, if you've ever used, say an Apple TV app, that's the one where I've seen this before, on the Apple TV box, where you tell it you've got this account on, this service, Disney, this account on the BBC, this account on there, and it knows them all. So every time you log into your Apple TV, it just knows all that stuff. You don't have to log in individually to different accounts. It's kind of like that, but it's got a really, really cool twist up its sleeve. So first, let's look at how it works. Let's look at how you log in. So I've got a, I've got a um, Prime 4 here. This is not logged into anything. Uh, and so I can go to the top of the unit and I can go to profiles here. Tap on profile and then it says log in at the top here. So I'm gonna click log in there and it says connect, discover, play. So the idea here is you take your phone uh, and you scan this code here uh, and then you enter what it says. Now I'm not gonna do that here. I'm going to go to device.engine.com uh, in order to show you more easily exactly how this works. So it says go to there and enter this code, TNLSCNQQ. You could probably do this now and log into me. Uh, so I didn't think of that. Anyway, I've done it now, so it's too late. Uh, it's done. <laughs> uh, so you can't do that. My code has now been used. There you go. Um, right, so that happened over here, right? I logged in here. So then it says, right, you, uh, we want to access your profile. It logs you in on your computer. Uh, you are successfully logged in. You may now close this window. And over here, welcome Digital DJ Tips. Login successful. I can close that now. So now it doesn't look any different. However, there are a few new things. And so the new things look like this. So the first one of them is that I am 
logged in automatically to my streaming services. So if I go to Source, you see you've got all these streaming services here, Amazon, Beatport, BeatSource, SoundCloud, Tidal, Dropbox, where I can store my own music. I'm currently logged into my local MacBook, but I am now automatically logged into any of these. So if I go to Tidal, it will connect me directly to Tidal. Don't worry about that. Uh, and I'm there, I'm in. I haven't had to log in to Tidal. And the reason for that is that over here on the laptop, it knows my Tidal login on this page here. So down here, I've got the, the connected services and it knows I'm logged into Tidal. So I could log into the other ones here as well. And then they would automatically be logged in on the screen here. So what this means is that you, all you need really is your phone. You turn up to anyone who's got a Prime DJ system and you just click log in and you scan it with your phone. Your phone logs you in and now you've got all your streaming services or your local music on Dropbox or your own music on Dropbox, all logged in and ready to go, which is pretty cool. By the way, something I think that they are gonna do, uh, which they haven't uh, talked about yet, but it's obvious by the way they've set up the panels here, is if we're in the main menu here and we go to profile, this is where you find the login, but also, you've got all this other stuff, right? Playback, cues, loops, display, safety library. These are all your personal favorite settings on Engine. These are all in the same page where your profile is. So I imagine these will get backed up and it can load these from your profile uh, at some point soon as well. I imagine that's why it's all been done like this. Anyway, that isn't the big extra thing I wanted to show you about this. No, there's a really, really cool thing about this. So look at it this way. When you use something like Tidal is a great example. Tidal is not made for DJs. Tidal is a great streaming service, but it's not made for DJs, right? One of the things DJs don't like about Tidal is that when you're in there, so let's go and go to my Tidal on this unit here. When you're in Tidal, uh, you don't generally see the uh, you don't generally see the BPM and the key of your tracks. But I'm going to go to a playlist in here. Just go to a dance playlist here, and look at this. See these BPMs? and keys appearing here. This just doesn't happen. And if you're a user of Tidal on these units, you'll know that doesn't happen. So what the hell is going on? Well, the clue is in the fact that they're not all there. So they're nearly all there on this particular place, but look, there's one or two tracks that aren't there. So why not? Well, these are cloud key and BPM readings. What's happened here is that whenever anyone else, and remember this engine DJ 3.3 has been out on beta to its uh, beta users or beta to its beta users for a while. Whenever anyone downloads any track from a streaming service and analyzes it on their unit, it is fed back to the main database as long as that person is logged in, as long as their profile is logged in. So there's a big database of BPMs, keys, and of beat grids up in the engine DJ cloud, if you like, that you log into when you add your profile. And that means that when you are browsing playlists on streaming services that don't normally have BPM and key, Engine DJ can add them in for you, which is really cool. But then also when you download those tracks onto the unit, it knows the beat grid and the beat grid is automatically there. It doesn't have to analyze it. So you get the track quicker. It's a really cool addition to the new profiles feature. Uh, and I think it's going to be useful as long as, of course, you've got the internet, because if you're just DJing off a USB drive on one of these units, you're not online. None of this stuff I've shown you so far will work. However, awesome, good development. Nice to see it added here. Uh, and you don't need a USB with a key on it. Here's a USB, right? So on Pioneer DJ gear, uh, you can log in and access your collection on Pioneer gear. But the idea with this is you put a key that you've generated beforehand into the uh, unit itself somewhere, and then it reads it off there. The way it works here is by you just scanning a smart code as you saw at the beginning on your phone, and then you don't have to worry about having to do any of that. Right, cool. That is the profiles feature. Now let's move on and look at match. Now I said that stuff's being borrowed from everywhere here. Match is again coming from somewhere like here. If you've ever used a XDJ or a CDJ setup in a Pro DJ booth, you'll know that the track filter button, which appears on the units, is a really useful way of filtering a playlist that you're playing from, or a crate, selection of tunes, by a criteria that you, set of criteria that you choose. So for instance, you might choose, uh, I want it to be in a compatible key and I want it to be in a similar genre and I want it to be within five BPMs either way, right? You press that button and it'll sort the playlist based upon the currently playing track in that set of rules. So you can then look at what 
appears and say, okay, um, which one of these do I, do I want to play next? And you know it's going to be close by in BPM and in a similar key, et cetera, et cetera. Great way of picking, like a, a recommendation engine, great way of picking what you want to play next. Well, now it's on this as well. Uh, they call it Match and it works in exactly the same way. So I've got a track down here on this deck here playing. Okay, so this is the deck it's going to match to because this is the track that's currently playing. So uh, we're going to go to, I'm going to go back to now my source and I'm going to go back to my studio MacBook uh, and I'm going to just confirm that I want it to do that. There we go. So here's my playlist. This is the playlist I'm currently playing from. I'll tell you why I did that in a second, right? So this is the current track. Uh, so now this is the match function. I'm going to press the match button at the top here. So now it's given me a shorter list. You see, this is the list that have come up. So if I turn match off, I've got a whole long list of tracks here. But if I turn match on, it's shorter. And the reason it's shorter is that it's only given me keys. The currently playing track is in the key of 8A. And it's currently given me tracks in a compatible keys, 7s, 8s and 9s. And also they're quite close by BPM. And if I was to sort it by BPM, you'd see that they're all close enough by BPM uh, here. There's quite a wide BPM selection there from 112 to 128. I might not want that. So how do I affect these criteria? I press that little button there. Here I can change it. I can say, look, I want the BPM to be a bit tighter. I want the BPM to be there. I don't want to use fuzzy key mixing, by the way, brilliant that they've got that in here now. Uh, this is something that we've championed for a long time. I want to use exact key match, right? So I only want tracks that are really close with an exact key. Of course, my list is now going to be shorter. In fact, it's only found one track that matches all those things. And it could well be the track that I'm actually playing. It is indeed. So let's widen it again. Let's get that key match to compatible. Right, now there's a few more tracks that have appeared. So this is really cool because I can instantly see something that might beat mix well with what I'm currently playing. Now there's other criteria that could appear here. So this is just telling it which deck it matches it to. You're just gonna to wanna to leave this to the deck that's currently playing normally. Uh, there are other criteria that can appear here. So you can have a genre, you can have it hiding tracks you've already played, which is quite nice. But they don't appear when you're using a remote library like I am from this laptop it's just one of the little limitations also another limitation is it doesn't work with streaming services because it needs to have the tracks locally to do those checks you know is it the same key is it nearby in bpm etc etc so that's why i moved away from tidal to my local library however it's exactly the same over on this gear uh, the same limitations apply when you're using the track filter on pioneer uh, but having match is something that users have been asking for for a long time on the engine dj ecosystem it's great to see it there all right New features. This next one is borrowed from our friends over at Serato. Where's our DJM S11 mixer? Steve has stolen it, I think. God damn you, Steve. Uh, nonetheless, Smooth Echo. You know what Smooth Echo is? If you don't, I'll explain it. Smooth Echo is a way of having your DJ gear, when you move the crossfader away from the currently playing track or the line fader down from the currently playing track, or in the case of Serato with other things like cue points and so on, uh, it's a way of having it, instead of just going off, triggering an echo when you do that. Now, Smooth Echo came from the world of scratching and the Smooth Echo implementation on Pioneer DJ scratch mixers uh, for Serato has got some extra stuff which makes it more suitable for scratching than what I'm about to show you here. This is more for open format DJs because let's be honest, if you're an open format DJ playing lots of different genres and styles, what's the big thing you use a lot in order to get from one track to another? An echo out, isn't it? You like to trigger the echo, take the track off, let the echo do its thing, and then drop a new track in. It's a really nice, smooth way of mixing from track to track. However, that is something that needs multiple fingers or a bit of work, and you might get it wrong sometimes. This just makes it happen easily. And it's implemented nicely on this. I'll demonstrate it to you now. So here I've got, this is the track I was playing over on this deck here. So in order to turn on this echo, so for instance, now normally it will just turn off, right? Go like that, it's off, or that. No surprise there, right? However, if I want to use this new feature, I just turn on echo by tapping that button there. So now when I turn off, either using this fader here or this fader here, you'll get a nice echo. Check it out. And of course, if I had another track loaded on this deck, I could now start the other track playing and I've had that echo out to transform from one to the other. Uh, let's turn it on again there and I'll show it this way.
So that's about it really. It just saves you, for instance, another way of doing it, let's just turn it off there. Another way of doing it might be to just use the echo effect on here, right? There's an echo effect built in here. So you could uh, have the sweep echo on a little bit and then uh, turn it on here like this. But you've got to remember to, to move that a bit and then press that and then turn that off again afterwards and all this stuff. It's just easier the way they've implemented it here. So uh, there are a few controls. So we go into the menu here and then go to our settings. I can go to the new effects settings here and move down and you'll see there's a fader echo set up here. So there was quite a lot of echo going on there, wasn't there? I might want to reduce that a little bit. And it was on a three quarters of echo, which sounds nice, but half echo might be better for most tracks. So I've now changed that and I'm now going to get a different echo effect when I... Uh, uh, do that. A little bit more subtle, right? And there's another setting here in the uh, the effects panel, which is you've got this disarm after trigger, and I've got that turned on, on at the moment. So if I turn that off, then this is going to remain on until I turn it off, right? It's just going to stay on, so I could do it over and over again. It's always there. But you might just want it for once, in which case you don't need to go and turn that off if you have that thing set because it just do what do once and then it'll turn off itself so smooth echo it's uh called fader echo here but it's basically exactly the same as smooth echo in serato so engine dj 3.3 we've got profiles borrowed from well loads of things but i've used apple tv as an example there we've got um match borrowed definitely from pioneers cdj's track filter we've got fader echo borrowed from serato the next one is borrowed from Tractor. Now, any old tractor users here? I don't mean, don't mean you're old, I mean tractor's old. Don't, don't get me wrong there. Any tractor users here? Uh, I'm going to load another track onto another deck, one of those tracks maybe that was recommended to me. Let's load that onto this deck here. So I've now got two tracks playing over here and I'm going to start them both playing and I'm going to show you what this looks like. So it is a little meter at the top here, just underneath the looping and controls here. Let's just get both tracks playing. I'm gonna sync them up. Press the sync button on them both. Okay, they're now playing in sync, but what if they weren't? What if this track was slightly out? Well, let's do it. Let's move this track slightly out. Move this one slightly out. Now it's keeping them in sync for me because I've got the sync button turned on. This is actually going to be far more useful for manual beat mixing. Now the sync button's turned off, there's nothing helping me do this mix here. Both tracks are on by the way, there's one, there's the other. Both tracks are on. If I move this out now, we're off the beat, right? We can hear that's off the beat. It's out of phase is another word for it. But do we need to speed this up or slow it down to get that right? If you're new to manual beat mixing, that's one of the big things that people struggle with. Well, not anymore because these meters tell us. So this meter here is for this deck here. And that line that's just appeared there is telling me that this track is now not in phase and that I need to move it this way to get it back. And when that line goes to the middle, they're back in phase. Now, if it were the other way, the line would be in the other direction and you can see there it's telling me I'm way out. So now it tells me that I've got to move it this way to get it back. And there's one over on this deck as well. If you are a manual beat mixing lover, this is just a great thing to have. You're going to love it. And if you're learning manual beat mixing, it's going to help you just to get that thing right in your ears. Am I in front or am I behind? Just a small feature maybe, but a nice one. Right, this is apparently already on some engine DJ gear, but it's not on the Prime 4, which is what I normally review on. So it's new to me. Uh, and this next feature is effects. So I'm going to turn this effects knob here and look at this screen here that's appeared, showing me all the effects that I'm cycling through on this effects knob. Uh, so I can select the one I want here, or I can just turn the knob a bit to bring this up and I can hold down on the effect I want. Whoop that disappeared there, hold down on the effect I want and it will switch to that effect and down here it's now saying ping pong because I just switched to that. Small thing maybe but nice. Talking about the effects, other stuff they've added here. So on the, this is the XY effects right, so this gives you this. 
that's an LFO echo I've got there. I can select the effects here. So on the flanger, uh, it now, whoops, on the flanger, it now has a volume control going up and down, which it didn't have before, apparently. Uh, not something I'd spotted, but. So you get more flange higher up and less lower down. On the noise gate, and I really like the noise gate effect, uh, this one here. So this gives a gate, and a gate is where it's like, a gate is like the crossfader going in and out, and in and out, and in and out, and in and out on the track. Uh, but it adds noise to it as well. And there's now a noise slider here, which will decide how much noise is added. So with that turned down, it just is gonna sound like a gate effect. There's a reverb here as well, by the way. But if I want to add noise to it, I have a slider for it. So I can decide the amount of noise. And the amount of reverb that I want on that effect as well. And one more thing as we run through all that's new in Engine DJ 3.3, which was launched 21 minutes ago, is that the desktop software has got some useful new additions for smart playlists. So over on the desktop software, when you are creating a smart playlist, you get to choose rules. Uh, and the rules are things like, you know, uh, the BPM is in a certain range. Uh, well, now there are new drop downs that you can add. There's new things in the drop down. So you've got BPM comment, date added, file type, genre, grid, key, label, length, rating, title, and year down there. And then you've got different settings here, depending on what you select as well. They've basically made this a little bit more, um, a little bit more sophisticated with more things that you can do to create better smart playlists uh, for here. So, that's it, that's what's new. It's an interesting time for Engine DJ as a platform, I think for two reasons. Reason number one, quite publicly, the makers of Engine DJ are battling with the makers of Rekordbox, in other words, the company that owns Pioneer DJ because they are trying to buy Serato and Pioneer DJ would then run both Serato and Rekordbox, the two biggest DJ platforms by far. And the makers of Engine Software are saying, look, that's not fair. Um, yes, we've got Engine, but Engine is only for our standalone gear. It's not really DJ software. It's not designed to work with a laptop in the DJ booth in the same way Rekordbox, Tractor, Serato, etc. are. So that's not fair. It's a competition issue. Well, whether they win or lose that is going to depend, I think, on what happens to Engine DJ as a platform, because I think if they were to lose that, they would have two choices. One, one, stop making controllers that work with DJ software because they really don't want to work with Pioneer DJ on them. Uh, or two, develop this platform so it's a full strength DJ platform. So it would also work in the same way that those other ones do. I think that'd be really good. Clearly an awful lot of money would need to be spent on it and a lot of risk, but I think that'd be great. So yeah, an interesting crossroads for Engine. Which way will it go on that? The other thing I have to say, I think is a big challenge for Engine DJ right now is stems. Stems is coming on really fast. Let's just rein it back to the ability to instantly turn a track into an instrumental or an acapella by pressing a button. Having instant acapellas in your DJing is absolutely awesome. We made a course recently on Stems that did really, really well. There's a big appetite for it out there and the platforms are getting better and better and better at doing it. So it started off with Virtual DJ and with DJ Pro, who both introduced it originally. Didn't sound brilliant, Quickly, virtual DJs sounded very, very good indeed. Serato turned up, theirs sound very good. Rekordbox came in, their first effort doesn't sound very good. Uh, DJ Pro was suddenly sounding very old. Well, DJ Pro uh, is teasing a new version. I'm no doubt that one of the things they improve in that is going to be the stems, so they'll be very good again. Uh, this is just a big, fast moving area. And then you can now get stems in a beta version, a very, very um, kind of uh, limited beta version for Engine DJ. And I say limited because it only works on the Prime 4. Uh, in fact, only on the Prime 4 Plus. And, and whisper it, it's not very good. It isn't very good. It doesn't sound good. Uh, so I think that another big challenge for Engine DJ is to make stems, at least instant acapellas and instrumentals, sound acceptable at least. Uh, it's difficult because, of course, 
you have a laptop to play with, uh, or in the case of Algorithms DJ, powerful, powerful processors in phones, then you've got power. You're trying to do it on the limited processing power of, of, of units like this, not so easy. However, I do think it's gonna become not an option uh, because you know I review and use a lot of DJ gear. I'm immediately looking for the stems functions now as a kind of rule, and I think most DJs are gonna start doing that as they get used to them. And I think it's the instant acapella thing, really, that's the thing. All right, people, uh, we're gonna talk all about this in a second. Uh, and I'm gonna get your views on it. I'm gonna answer any questions you've got on it. But before we do, it's not all about Engine DJ today. There is a, another piece of news in the DJ world, which is uh, maybe not that important uh, in the big scheme of things, but we're rather proud of it. So I thought I would share it with you. Uh, and that is that Digital DJ Tips has had a whole new look online. Here is our new website. Hooray, who's that at the top there? Uh, yeah, we've, we've spent a lot of time uh, looking at the way we present what we do online and this is our brand new website. I thought I'd spend a second just showing it to you and talking you through it. Uh, so look, we're a DJ school and the first thing you do when you want to learn from us is join our newsletter. If you're not on it already, and most of you will be, you're missing out. So that's now the very first thing at the top of our website. Then the next thing you want to do if you're new to DJing or if you're returning to DJing is get our course. It's the course of our book uh, and it is the best way to learn how to DJ. It's helped thousands and thousands and thousands of people returning to the hobby or starting afresh. So that's the next thing we tell you about. Uh, then we tell you about our other courses. Of course, not everyone, else, not everyone is just starting. Uh, and so we've got a lot of other courses. Uh, all of these things, of course, click through to the main pages. We're just looking at the homepage here. Then we tell you about the book and where to get it and so on. Uh, then we tell you about our live shows. You're watching one of those live shows right now. We do them twice a week. We do them every week and they're really useful. So we tell you all about those and give you a, a link straight through to our brand new free um, lessons and videos area, which looks like this. It's like Netflix, but better for DJs. Uh, so there's that. Uh, and then we tell you all about our other stuff. Uh, and the other stuff is this. It's our free guides and resources, which are awesome. If you've never discovered these, they, we've, we've got some really in-depth free guides to teach you all kinds of things in DJing. And they all show up here. Uh, and then our reviews, our reviews section, again, is something a lot of people don't know about how deep our reviews section goes. So I'll just click on any review here. Uh, here it is, uh, the review of the Rev7 unit. There's always a video, uh, but there's so much in the reviews area that you can not only just browse in the same way that we were looking at with the videos then, uh, but you can filter. You can say, look, I'm actually after DJ gear that works with Tractor. Um, so there we go. There's all the Tractor stuff in one place. Very powerful way of searching through our reviews. Uh, and remember, we are not paid for by these companies, we are paid for by you, our students, so therefore everything you see here is unbiased and the truth. Uh, right, so that's it, there's our new website. Go take a look if you haven't looked at it recently. A lot has changed on the Digital DJ Tips website and we think you're gonna like what you see. Uh, so, the big news of course is this new stuff from Engine, especially for you Engine users. So let's pull that laptop in that I've been talking to you uh, with the website on it. Let's pull it in here and see what you're saying. What have you got to say about these new features? Uh, I've got lots and lots of comments. I can see them already. This is the view I get, by the way, of myself, which is quite distracting sometimes, but more importantly, of all your comments coming in here. Uh, so that's what I'm looking at now when you see me staring down, looking for, uh, looking for stuff to chat to you about. I'm gonna start off by saying hello to regulars. Uh, I'm gonna pick out half a dozen people as ever. Mixmaster G, Robert, Nexu, Jin. Hello to David and to, uh, and to DJ Stu C, uh, who says, ooh, new engine update indeed. Uh, right, so Lee. Uh, let's start talking about this stuff. Lee says it must be new software season. Uh, apparently the new algorithm version five is released tomorrow uh, and Serato and Pioneer have just released new updates as well. Serato has just released officially the beta that everyone's been using, which gives you use of stems on gear like this, uh, open stems up to far more gear. So go take a look at that update if you're a Serato user. Thanks for reminding me of that, Lee. Uh, right. Um, this is then from Mixmaster G who says the 3.3 is not available on the Engine DJ website. I'm sure it will be soon enough. The official launch is right now. Um, you can read about it on the Digital DJ Tips website, by the way. Uh, if you head over to Digital DJ Tips, you'll find it on there. 
hopefully as of just about now because the team will have put that live. So let's go back to that site we were looking at, click on the blog at the top, should be the top story right now. There it is, Engine DJ 3.3. So if you wanna have a look at this um, and scan, look, that's the live stream there. They've already slotted it in. My team are efficient, well done people. Uh, and me talking through all the different stuff we just looked at here, there as well. So yeah, it will, if it's not there now, it will be very, very soon because, uh, well, unless I've got the launch day wrong, in which case, hey, sorry guys. Uh, no, I'm sure I haven't. Right, uh, so back to uh, your comments and queries about this. Um, I was just trying to log in with that QR code, says Nexu Jin. Beat you to it, Nexu. Uh, so um, Kesha says, uh, oh, there's some bad stuff going on, people. Bad stuff. Uh, so good luck. Uh, stuff going on outside your front doors. IRL, as they say. Uh, so if you're involved in that stuff that all our community is chatting about, oh, stay safe. Um, right, we'll move on to DJ. DJ is what we're here to talk about, really. Uh, so naughty kids getting whipped, I'm reading about. Um, right. Uh, right, so the Ruckus says, if you go to exact on the key thing on match, your party will be over very soon. It will, indeed, when I was doing the, showing you the key features there. Right, come on, engine users. Smooth Echo would automate about 50% of what I do, says you don't like my music. Yes, it would. A lot of DJs nowadays love that Echo stuff. Um, right, so once you're logged in, you can save everything to your driving profile and it should remember your login details next time, says Sarah Hall. Uh, yeah, but this is a uh, cloud, this is kind of, they've added the cloud to all of that. Um, so uh, you don't like my music, says when you're using the echo, make sure you engage it on the downbeat. Yeah, engage it before you actually need it, I think is the key. You can't echo out something that, uh, that isn't there and if you echo out on the offbeat, there's, you're echoing a bit of silence, uh, so you're quite right there. Uh, right, so uh, we need a filter sweep. There is a filter sweep, isn't there? Um, so uh, this is handy. I love the new phase meter, says Robert, that's been borrowed from Tractor. Uh, DJ Stucy, absolutely smashing it with this update. Uh, the channel selections too. Uh, so apparently something here was in a previous update. Uh, nothing I covered, I don't think. Um, so um, what else have we got here that you are asking about? Um, uh, I missed the start, says DJ Sarah Hall. We'll, we'll let you off, Sarah. Did Phil mention the sharing of data on Tidal? Yes, so yes, so there's some Tidal, yes, we did mention it. So yeah, it's really cool the way that works. Um, so funny, says the Rockers. Last night, after I updated Serato, I checked Engine DJ for updates of their own. Of course, I found nothing, uh, however, uh, I was a day early and now I know, cool. Uh, so would a merge between engine DJ and virtual DJ be a realistic scenario, says Robert. Interesting that, uh, because of course, they're both kind of software platforms that are being kind of left out a little bit maybe. I don't think so. Uh, engine DJ is very tied to the hardware from Denon and Newmark, which is owned under one label, one, 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 one uh, platform. And I don't think virtual DJ would would sell, not for any money that they'd be prepared to pay. Virtual DJ does very well uh, already. Uh, so there we go. Uh, they could develop a hardware plugin for stems. Interesting, yeah, so you could have a dongle that plugs into the unit itself to give you the extra power for stems. Yeah, good idea that. Uh, that could be a way around it, I love it. Uh, do, you, do you work for in music? If you don't, you should. Uh, Mixmaster G says the new website looks really smooth, Phil. Congratulations on that. Well, thank you. It means a lot to hear that, Mixmaster G. As does Vic. Uh, so thank you, Vic, there for that. Um, I'm loving the look of the new site as well, says Benny. Um, right. Uh, I really like the look of this gear, but I'm going to have to wait till next year to get it. Hey, you know, we can't all have what we want uh, when we want it, can we? How good it would be if we could, right? Um, so when can I update the download? I'm guessing that, you know, they've announced it now, right? They've just announced it. So I'm gonna imagine it's gonna roll out quite soon. Uh, so Peter says, stems are great, but I would love it if Engine would add audio tagging. It sucks to have to write in artist names and titles of the songs. Uh, yeah, good thinking. Maybe that is something that can be added in. Uh, Hi, Phil. I guess I have to go to update my live four, says Phil Worrell. Hello, Phil. Yes, time to update for sure. Uh, the Rockus says that that new Serato update now allows me to use stems on my XP2 and DJMA9. Great times. Yeah, have fun with your new stems. Uh, does this new engine update work with the DEN and LC and SC models? Yes, it does as far as I know. Um, and so Chris says, as a former lighting designer who is learning to DJ, 
Having an all-in-one unit is great. Uh, we eventually got to one console, so this is awesome to be able to be dependent on, uh, to not be dependent on a laptop. Well, this unit here also controls lighting. I don't know if you were aware of that, but there is a, a whole lighting section in here. Um, at the moment, I can't remember how to get to it, but that's because I'm live and my head goes to absolute mush when I'm live. Uh, but just trust me on that. There's a lighting section in here that you can control. Uh, here it is, lighting. Uh, and so you can use it with DMX or you can use it with uh, Hue lighting, Philips Hue lighting and Nano Leaf and stuff like that. So as a lighting user, uh, an ex-lighting designer, if you didn't know that, I bet you're really pleased about these standalone units now. Uh, we use it at home with uh, Nano Leaf lighting. My daughter uses a uh, little Mix, Mix Stream Pro at home. Uh, with narrow leaf in her bedroom and is very much into it. Uh, right, can we filter and organize search tracks by BPM and key in standard mode yet, alone yet? No, you can't. So when you're in that, uh, when you're in the, the Tidal library here, so let's just go back to my Tidal here, it will tell you the tracks uh, that are in the, in the list. Actually, let's go to the new tracks, right? So this is the brand new stuff on Tidal. Uh, let's see how How many of these it's got? So not as many, right? So I was in a classic dance playlist before. There's only a few of these tracks that have been loaded by the beta users of Tidal before. Uh, only a couple up there. However, of course, as this rolls out, to, or so the beta users of Engine DJ, when this rolls out to everyone, you're going to find that more and more of these tracks have got those by them. There's a lot more there in the top 100, right? Because these are all far more popular tracks. In fact, nearly all of them. But no, there's no way, there's no sort at the top here. There's a sort at the top here if you're on your own music. So we go back to my own music here, which, uh, which uh, has got exactly the same. Let's turn match off. You see here now I've got all the tracks, but now I can say, okay, I want to sort by key. And now they're sorted by musical key down here, or I want to sort by BPM. Uh, now they're sorted by BPM here, but you can't do that uh, on the streaming services, which would be useful, wouldn't it, in a playlist. So maybe that's coming. Maybe that's something that they can add uh, at some point. Uh, right, so we've actually got Den and DJ on here talking to us and helping out as they always like to do because they're very helpful. So Jason over there on YouTube, thank you for helping out. Jason says 3.3 will be released and available for all Engine DJ hardware, but mixers are, are not included as they're built on different platforms. Also, if you do have standalone Engine DJ gear, so I've got down here the uh, I can't actually reach it without doing my backing, so I'm not going to try. But if you've got the SC6000, for instance, um, and you've got two of them, like I've got, for instance, I've got two. Uh, oh, look, there's us. There's me. There's your comments. Uh, I've got two uh, Pioneer units here. Let's say I had two SC6000s here. You'd have to log in individually on both of them, apparently. You can't just log in on one and it works across both of them. I think that's something that they're going to want to work on and make better, especially if they're networked. Uh, but apparently now it has to be individual units. Uh, Phil says, I'll be applying for a job at In Music tomorrow after that great idea I came up with. Uh, right, and um, Buddha Nova says, please, yes, hardware plug-in. Please, Denon, make this for us for STEMS. It would be super awesome. It could be just like a, you know, a, that, that happens a lot, doesn't it? I use a music system, a music uh, library system at home on my hi-fi called Rune, R-O-O-N. And Rune is like a, a great way of merging your favorite streaming services and your local library and then spreading that audio out to multi-rooms, really high quality. It's like a pretty geeky thing, but hey, I'm a geek. Um, and you can actually get a little Raspberry Pi and plug it into your Rune box and then add all kinds of extensions to it, uh, like, like AI and stuff that it, you couldn't do on the original uh, unit. So the similar thing going on here might be really cool. You know, let's get a dongle that gives you, that totally soups up your gear. You know, that, I think that's gonna run, that idea. Um, the Ruckus says the aftermath of my annual gas, i.e. gear acquisition syndrome, something we talk about a lot here. Uh, the aftermath of my annual gas attack is complete. And as a result, with the acquisition of the DJS 1000 is my pro industry setup. Oh, I'm glad uh, that you have, uh, I'm glad that you have uh, got everything you've been looking for this year. I bet there's something more next year that you want. Um, so uh, not related to what we're talking about, but hey, we like to try and help you uh, on YouTube. Serato, remove links to buy pitch and time, etc. Uh, individually, you need to buy Serato Suite if you want key shifting in Serato. Um, so yeah, and the links do still work if you can find them. And if you search Serato, pitch and time, Reddit, search Serato, pitch and time, Reddit, and look at the Reddit threads that come up there you won't take very long to find a deep link into the Serato site where you can still buy pitch and time at like $30. 
and you don't have to spend the hundreds to get the Serato suite. I talked to Serato about this. I said, please give us a way of officially giving people that because it's not fair that you're getting them to buy the whole big version of Serato full of stuff they'll never use just to get key shifting. And they said, sorry, we can't help at this point. So I'm helping you now. Someone's posted that deep link on Reddit. I would have just put it on Digital DJ Tips like on the main site, but then they'd, they'd know I was doing it and turn it off. Hopefully they're not watching this. Um, so yeah. Uh, Jai Panade on Twitch says, I'd like to see Engine DJ also manage my Beatport playlists like Serato does, perhaps later. There you go, well Serato are watching, so passing that one on there. Um, and then, does this mean that every major DJ performance software is now Sonoma compatible? I think it does, Philip, because another thing they announced is that the Engine DJ desktop is now fully compatible with uh, Sonoma on the Mac. So yes, I think it does mean that they're all compatible. Right, people, I've talked for far too long here. We've been looking at the new Engine DJ 3.3 that comes with new profiles login. It comes with a new match feature so that you can do similar to track filter on Pioneer DJ's gear. It's got a new really cool fader echo that's very similar to the smooth echo on the, uh, on the uh, equivalent gear from uh, Serato. And it's also got nice new on-screen effects uh, and other stuff as well that we haven't had time to uh, demonstrate everything, but I hope we've demonstrated enough of uh, enough stuff here. I'm trying to get to the on-screen effects, but I'm in the wrong page. I want to go to that view there to do that. Give me back my view. Anyway, you've already seen them once. Once is enough. Uh, it's all new. It's all for Engine DJ. It's all downloadable over Wi-Fi right now uh, for free to all Engine DJ users. So go grab it if you are one. And if not, I hope I've helped you to see what's going on uh, in software outside of what you use, or rather in embedded software outside of what you currently use. That's all we've got for you today. Go take a look at the new Digital DJ website if you haven't already uh, and take the time to take a dig through all this stuff that we've got that a lot of people don't know we've got, right? It's all now front and center on our brand new website at digitaldjtips.com. Let us know what you think about it. Uh, meanwhile, for me, Phil, here in the studio, get good, get out there, make the moments. Until next time, bye-bye.